Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is June 28th, 2021, and today I'm going to share some new ideas with you from the Word of God. I'll be sharing scriptures from Genesis, 1 Timothy, Exodus, and Isaiah. The title of this video is called Pierce My Ear. Man's History on Earth. I want to try to explain in today's video God's purpose for creating man. Why did God create man? Specifically, why did God create man in his own image? Let's look at a couple of verses here. First, we'll go to Genesis chapter 1. In uh, verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. First of all, who is the us here? Well, I believe the us is God the Father and God the Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> And let them, God goes on talking to the other, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then let's go on to chapter 2 and look at a couple of verses. Let's go to verse 18. Genesis 2.18 says, Then Yahuwah Elohim, they always interpret that in our English Standard Version and others as the Lord God. That is, Yahuwah Elohim said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground, the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And so on from there. But I want to draw your attention to this. What God said, it is not good that man should be alone. Remember that I've taught that all of the scripture is written in parables. They, they give historical truth, an historical event, but they speak of prophetic future reality. Could it be that when... Yahuwah Elohim said, it is not good that man should be alone. That, in fact, he was prophetically saying, it is not good that God should be alone. God made man in his image for a reason. The reality is that he did not fully complete man at the very beginning. Because if he had, then man could not have sinned. The purpose of this historical trial that mankind is on is that he will be fully made into God's image. Now in verse, or in chapter 3, we have the fall of man. We'll start with verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? 
And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was be, to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. Now, there are many here, many who say that this sin that Eve committed at this time was in having sex with um, the serpent. That doesn't really seem to fit with respect to the way this is um, written, because God did say that they could eat of any tree in the garden, but they could not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So to say that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, to eat of that tree was to have sex with the serpent doesn't really make sense to me. And then if you look at, um, and we'll just quickly go there to uh, the next chapter, Genesis chapter four, and I wanna read this specifically, so I'm looking this up. It says, it starts like this, and this was after chapter three in the fall and everything. It's, it begins this way. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife. That's a euphemism for having sexual intercourse. Knew Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. See, that follows the recording that Adam and Eve had sexual relations. And then verse two, and again, again, meaning again, Adam knew his wife and she bore his brother Abel. So it seems to me that the way the scripture is written in Genesis, that it does not indicate that the sin that Eve committed was one of having sex with the serpent. However, when you consider the really what might be called the fundamental sin of mankind, it is the sexual sin. God condemns adultery. Adultery carried the death penalty under God's law. Adultery is very common. If, in fact, Eve did have sex with the serpent, then the sin that she committed was the sin of adultery. And the punishment under God's law would be death. And indeed, the punishment under God's law that he, that he gave Adam and Eve was that if you eat of this tree, you will die. Now it's interesting what the scripture says concerning the sin. Let's just look at it in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. 
It says, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. But the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Adam was not deceived. What happened? Here's what I believe happened. Eve was deceived and ate of the apple, catching Adam unaware, I believe. Once Adam saw that Eve had eaten the apple, he knew that she was going to die. But Adam, being made in the image of God and being a type of Christ, willingly died for Eve's sake. So Adam ate of that forbidden fruit, whatever it was, so that he could follow her into death. Now what, that again is a parable, isn't it? Because what that, what that foretells is that the second man, Jesus, came. He became a curse for us by being hung upon a tree and dying up on a tree and therefore entered into death for us. So he followed us into death, just like Adam followed Eve into death. And Jesus was able to ransom us, was able to redeem us from the power of death. In the scripture, over and over and over again, God calls his chosen people his bride. That was true both to the nation of Israel and it's true with respect to the church. Now, with respect to Israel, it says that God gave Israel a certificate of divorce. With respect to the church, it said that the members of the church are the bride of Christ. It is not good for man or for God to be alone. I believe that the purpose of creation has been that God has created certain ones of mankind, the overcomers, I believe, fully into his image so that they are becoming just like him. They want to be perfect, just like their heavenly father is perfect. When the time comes they will be glorified. There will be a spiritual event that will glorify them so that they no longer have any capacity to sin. As long as we live in this flesh, as long as we are carnal beings, we can sin. And the older you get, the clearer that becomes that you can't just suddenly decide you're never going to sin again and then not sin again. We live in a, a body of flesh that will sin until it no longer has power to sin. And that power will come from God upon the glorification of the Kodeshim first. They are the first fruits of God.
Now I want to take you to a um, another scripture, Exodus 21. It was in Exodus 20 that uh, God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses. And he continues to speak forth commands in chapter 21. And I'm going to read the first six verses. Now these are the rules that you shall set before them. When you buy a Hebrew slave, he shall serve six years. And in the seventh, he shall go out free for nothing. If he comes in single, he shall go out single. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters and he shall go out alone. But if the slave plainly says, I love my master, my wife and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him to God and he shall bring him to the door or the doorpost and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl and he shall be his slave forever. So the master pierces his ear against the door and he becomes his slave forever. Notice that the slave does this willingly. The slave decides that he is going to stay with the master. And so he willingly allows his ear to be pierced and he willingly allows himself to remain a slave to his master. Well, of course, this is prophetic again. And what does that speak of? What does this little law speak of? We who have known God now for a long time, have we come to the place where we are willing to say, your house, your rules, your laws, your ways are the only way. I therefore voluntarily submit myself to them and I voluntarily become your slave eternally. I submit to your ways. Well, that's what Paul thought. Romans chapter 1 begins Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus. And, and several other times in Paul's letters, he will introduce himself as a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. Once God revealed himself to Paul, Paul willingly laid down his life for, for his God, for his Savior. And that's what the parable of the law of Exodus 21 is about, the slave who voluntarily becomes a lifelong slave of his master. That's really what God is looking for. in a people, a people who want to belong to his home. What I want to do now, having laid that foundation, is take you to Isaiah 24. Because now we're going to come to where we are in history and um, discuss the history of man on earth. 
I think before I read Isaiah 24, I'm going to read Psalm uh, 2. So let's go to Psalm 2. Psalm 1 is a wonderful psalm. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And then chapter 2. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. That's the way Psalm 2 begins. And what that does, that tells you the history of man. The history of man has been one of trying to bait, break free of what they say are the tyrannical bonds of God. They do not want to be bound by God's laws. Therefore, they change God's laws. 2015, they make homosexual marriage the law of the land in the United States of America. Today, they're trying to change the definitions of male and female. Today, they're trying to say it's okay for one, for a male to become a female through surgery and pharmacia, sorcery. Surgery and sorcery, the tools of the devil in today's world. Why do the nations rage? Why do the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahuwah and against his anointed. Who is his anointed? First, of course, Jesus and then all of those who are faithful and are called by his name, who still preach the law and the testimony. And so the people, the kings and the rulers, counsel, take counsel together against Yahuwah and us. And they say, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. So the whole history of man has been one of trying to break free from God's law. And they've done a good job of it, haven't they? They have broken God's laws in so many ways. And we're going to examine those ways now in Isaiah chapter 24. First, though, now consider, what's the other side of that? Are we of those who will take counsel together, together to try to burst asunder God's restraints upon us through his law? Or are we of those who will willingly put our ear to the doorpost and have our ears pierced and assign that we willingly become the slaves, the servants of our holy and just creator. Those are the two options before us. So now let's look at Isaiah 24 and let's see what men have been able to do through their counseling together. Behold, the Lord will empty the earth and make it desolate, and he will twist its surface and scatter its inhabitants. 
And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the slave, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the creditor, so with the debtor. The earth shall be utterly empty and utterly plundered, for the Lord has spoken this word. Everyone is affected. What is happening now through this COVID jab, what is happening now is the beginning of God's judgment upon the earth. Just uh, last Friday, I was speaking to a, a friend, a local friend, um, and he told me that his grandfather had just died. He had just died the day before. That was last Thursday. And that was two days after he got his second COVID jab. So if you're paying attention to what's going on, we can expect to see quite a lot of death and destruction come within a very short period of time. And it's by design. By design of those who want to rule the earth and want to make slaves of all those who remain. Isaiah 24, verse 4. The earth mourns and withers, the world languishes and withers. The highest people of the earth languish. They're not languishing yet, are they? But the time is coming. The earth lies defiled under its inhabitants. The earth lies defiled under its inhabitants, for they have transgressed the laws, violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant. What does Psalm 2 say? Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. What does Isaiah 24 say? They have transgressed the laws, violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth. What are they spraying in our skies every day? Why do they make us breathe metal and nanoparticles? Why do they control our weather? Why do you sometimes hear mysterious low frequency hums? Why do they put mercury in vaccines? Why do they tell us that fresh butter is not good for us or fresh eggs are not good for us or that cooking your meat over wood smoke is going to cause cancer? Why do they tell us things that are lies? They lie about everything. Isaiah 24, 7. The wine mourns, the vine languishes. All the merry-hearted sigh. The mirth of the tambourines is stilled. The noise of the jubilant has ceased. The mirth of the lyre is stilled. No more do they drink wine with singing. Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. The wasted city is broken down. Every house is shut up so that none can enter. There is an outcry in the streets for lack of wine. All joy has grown dark. The gladness of the earth is banished. Desolation is left in the city. The gates are battered into ruins. Look at our cities in America. Minneapolis, Portland, Seattle, Washington, D.C., L.A., Chicago, St. Louis, um, Baltimore, over and over, Pittsburgh, Miami. For thus it shall be in the midst of the earth among the nations, as when an olive tree is beaten, as at the gleaning when the grape harvest is done. So here we have this 
picture of incredible destruction in the earth. And that's, that's where we are. Don't you see it? That's where we are. But right in the midst of this, for three verses, they lift up their voices, they sing for joy over the majesty of the Lord, they shout from the west. Therefore in the east give glory to the Lord. In the coastlands of the sea give glory to the name of Yahuwah, the Elohim of Israel. For the ends of the earth, from the ends of the earth, we hear songs of praise, of glory to the righteous one. So, see, this is the prophecy God gave Isaiah. And then at the end of this verse 16, Isaiah says, But I say, I waste away. I waste away. Woe is me, for the traitors have betrayed with betrayal, the traitors have betrayed. Isn't that what you feel like today? God is calling us to begin to rejoice, begin to rejoice and praise him in the midst of this destruction that we see all around us. Because yes, indeed, the traitors have betrayed with betrayal, the traitors have betrayed. We see betrayal everywhere. There is no justice in the land. There is no justice in the earth. There is no justice in the United States of America. The law has been corrupted. Every aspect of law enforcement and of the, the judiciary has been corrupted. And most attorneys will take a bribe to, per to pervert justice. Then right after Isaiah speaks and says, the betrayers have betrayed, he goes back to the prophecy. Terror and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. He who flees at the sound of the terror shall fall into the pit. And he who climbs out of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For the windows of heaven are opened and the foundations of the earth tremble. The earth is utterly broken. The earth is split apart. The earth is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunken man. It sways like a hut. Its transgression lies heavy upon it, and it falls and will not rise again. Do you see? This prophecy has not ever been fulfilled, but it's about to be fulfilled. The earth staggers like a drunken man, and that's the way it is today. It sways like a hut. Its transgression lies heavy upon it, and it falls and will not rise again. It falls and will not rise again. Don't think you're ever going back to the way it was. Do you even want to go back? Now that you know how corrupt everything is, now that you know the level of sin, hypocrisy, evil, disgusting evil that our leaders partake of, now that you know, do you want to go back to some kind of semblance or of normality? How can we live in a world where everything is a lie? They teach us lies from our earliest childhood. Much of the science we learn is a lie. 
Most of the history we learn is a lie. They give us drugs to dumb us down. They, they scatter drugs from the skies through their airplanes to make us weak, to make our bodies weak and to make us unable to think clearly. It's a struggle to exist in this depraved, evil world. Do you want to stay in it? Why? Now, I voted for and I support supported Donald Trump. But let me tell you something. Donald Trump, even if he comes back soon, and he may, and then it will be clear that he received a mortal head wound, but that that mortal head wound has been healed. And you need to read my, or go through my video series, The Mystery of the Beast, to understand what I just said. And Donald Trump may, when he comes back, begin to judge a lot of the evil perpetrators of the earth. But the scripture is clear. It is the eighth head of the beast and his false prophet, the beast that rises from the earth who deceives the world into making an image to the beast and who convinces them to take the mark of the beast. Do not be deceived. The vast majority of people who support Trump appear to be decent people. Patriots. Patriots. People who don't go out and kill others, don't go out and steal from others. Who speak of love and truth and virtue. And that's what they want. But there is a profound group within this whole patriot movement, within the whole group of people on the earth that support Donald Trump, comprised of people who are new age believers, who, who speak of things like channeling spirits for information, who speak of remote viewing, leaving their bodies to go places to see what's happening somewhere else, who speak of having seen aliens many different races of aliens. And they all speak of God. And they all speak of love. But we need to learn how to identify them. Identify them. What are they what else are they saying? We have to increase our vibrations. <coughs> so that we can move from the third to the fifth dimension. Now these are new age ideas. We have to learn how to use our chakras, uh, our pineal gland. You have people talking about shamans, astrology, using trying to predict the future through the course of the stars. And I see Christians often being interviewed by, well, not often, usually they're New Age believers, but once in a while a Christian being interviewed by some of these New Age uh, interviewers that have become very popular and very patriotic. Um, but the Christians don't seem to hold their ground. And what is their ground? 
Their ground is the stumbling stone. There is only one name under heaven by which man will be saved. What is that name? Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, Jesus. He, yeah, he was, he's an ascended master. Yeah, he was a good teacher. No, 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 no. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. Jesus was the man who lived on earth in a body like mine, who was God in the flesh. He said, before Abraham was, I am. I am. Jesus. Jesus appeared in the Old Testament on numerous occasions. He appeared to Abraham. Don't look for things to become normal again. As the proverb goes, if Trump returns out of the frying pan into the fire, So let's just finish up with the last verses from Isaiah 24. The earth staggers like a drunken man. That's today. It sways like a hut. Its transgression lies heavy upon it. And it falls and will not rise again. On that day, Yahuwah will punish the host of heaven in heaven and the kings of the earth on the earth. Do you hear? He will punish the heavenly beings in heaven, and he will punish the kings of the earth, the mortal men on the earth. They, both groups, will be gathered together as prisoners in a pit. They will be shut up in a prison, and after many days they will be punished. Then the moon will be confounded and the sun ashamed. For Yahuwah of hosts reigns on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his elders gloriously. We are right on the verge. But... This is a, a time of great trial, tribulation, and terror. I want to end with a couple of verses. I think it's Isaiah 43. Let's see. Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 3, speaks to us, speaks to God's overcomers, speaks to the Kodeshim. But now thus says the Lord, thus says Yahuwah, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel. Israel is a code word for overcomers. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. See, we're going through deep waters right now. When you pass through the rivers, the running waters, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. We are going through fiery trials now. 
never in my life has my faith been tried as much as it is these days. And it's tried because of the, the quietness of God. That God doesn't seem to be saying anything. You know, I don't see any, I don't see any miracles and uh, don't see any, anything that seems to be supernatural coming from the hand of God right now, but I sure see a lot of evil preying upon men right now. And so it's a testing of our faith to remain in faith and not give in to fear. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. God, the God of the Old Testament, is our Savior. Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ, is our Savior. He is the stumbling stone. People do not want to admit that they can't do it on their own, that they're not strong enough in their own flesh to make it to salvation. They cannot glorify themselves. They cannot become immortal by their own strength of will. Only, only through him, only through Jesus. That's the only way we make it. That's the only way we get into New Jerusalem is through him. We have to go through the door and he is the door. So, yes, these are terrible times. These are times unlike any other. My wife and I expect to see many members of our family die because they took the COVID jab. We, um, don't know what to expect. But we know we don't want to live in a world that is ruled by Satan, in which there is no justice, in which there is only perversity and idolatry. We willingly place our ear up on the door for our Master, our Lord, to pierce so that we become members of his household forever.